Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome home to USA Global TV and Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is a woman's prerogative. You may be thinking to yourself, oh, I thought you just had that on earlier. We did. Guess what? We have two episodes weekly of a woman's prerogative where women join us from around the world. We do have some full-time panelists, and we also have guests. So if you'd like to come and share your story with us, we'd love to hear from you. You. Today, our topic is writing for a travel magazine, how I would describe where I live. And of course, if you're writing and you want to encourage someone, you have to write something really motivational and inspirational. So wherever it is you're living, whether you like it or not, what is it that you would write to attract other people to come to where you are? Of course, I'm not alone. We do have two women backstage. They've never met each other before, and they're from different parts of the world, which is super fantastic. Let's Let's welcome our full-time panelist, Mariska Dupria. Hello. Hello, hello. And thank you again for having me here. Thank you so much. Good morning to you and good evening here to me. We actually have a team member here with us. She is from the Pacific coast of the United States, and she normally is joining me at O Dark 100, 6 a.m. So I'm excited that she can actually join us at a reasonable hour for herself. Her name is Tracy Cram Perkins, and she is an author of an incredible book that I actually own, my sister owns. She's helped me tremendously. We're going to welcome her and hear her story. Hi, Tracy. Hi, you guys. <laughs> nice to have you with us. And well, thank you. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> I'm just thrilled to introduce the two of you to each other and also to have the three of us here in this space. I love to see where things go. We don't have a script, as you know. So what I'd like to start off with is having you describe the value you bring to our audience and why are you here today? I mean, I know why you're here, but why are you here? Let's put the pressure on our guest and have her go first. <laughs> <Tracy. Woo -hoo! laughs> <laughs> well, I, God, I keep seeming to lose my connection here. Um, but the value I'm bringing, and I'm going to hold it up, is I am the author, and I don't know if I can do this, of Dementia Home Care. And so... Um, I try to help people around the world take care of their family member in their home and just finding simple ways to help them so that they can ha have reduced burden. I mean, just to make it easier and actually realize there is some joy and there is something that they can get out of it at the end. So that's really my mission. Um, I try and do that by teaching people how to use the hardware store, how to use colors, uh, how to reframe. So there's all sorts of different things that you can do to make it easier to deal with dementia. So that's really where my background is. Thanks, Tracy. And why did you book in today? Why are you here right now? Oh, I'm not sure she can hear us or not. Oh, I, <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm having a problem with my, my, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. So what was the question? So what, so what brought you here today, aside from my invitation? Why did you decide to book in on this show? Because I watched one of the previous episodes that you guys had, and you were having so much fun. I thought, oh, my gosh, I want to try this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> we love to hear that. And uh, just to tag on to that, I just want everyone to know that Tracy's book has had so many thousands of sales. It's amazing because there's so many people out there who are taking care of someone who has dementia. And Tracy has survived caregiving four different times. So she is absolutely an expert. Please do go and purchase her book. All right, thank you, Tracy. Let's go over to Mariska. Mariska, you obviously are our regular full-time panelist. You've been with me since the beginning. Tell us a little bit about the value that you bring and why you show up every week for this show. Ooh, value I bring. Let's see, that's that's always a loaded question for me, and I don't know why. Um, value I bring, so I work within the coaching space, really enjoy engineers and people moving from a specialization, so whatever it is that they did in their career, uh, most probably engineering-wise, before, and moving into leadership where we work a lot more with human beings and seeing how that works and how we work for ourselves because that is also part of that journey into leadership is not only understanding how we lead teams but also how we are showing up because the way that we show up as an individual will impact our environment. So really understanding that a little bit more for ourselves and getting some clarity around that. So that's the value that I bring. And then why I show up on this platform and specifically a woman's prerogative. Well, Dr. Jacqueline, it's because you come up with such interesting topics for us to discuss. And as mentioned earlier, we have a lot of fun. So yes, of course, <laughs> that would keep us coming back. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. And though, for those of you who don't know, Mariska has been coaching me for years. She is the person who helped me come up with plan A, B, and C to leave my corporate career and go out on my own in 2020. So we actually got certified together as holistic life career and executive coaches. And she took her, her certification to another level. So thank you for being here today. All right. I was explaining to Tracy that the women's prerogative show that we did earlier today, our topic was our elevator pitch. And it was a really good topic because we all need an elevator pitch. So we'll start off with the topic I came up with today. And if we have some more time, maybe we'll dive into that. OK. Sounds all good. right. I want you to imagine you're doing exactly what it is that you do today. You get an email or you get a phone call and someone says to you, hey, guess what? We have this amazing opportunity for you to write a column about where you live and we'll pay you for it. And it's going to be used as a travel guide. So for people who are looking to go to wherever it is that you live, they want to know what are the, the things they have to see? What are the attractions? What is the upside? So before we do that, tell us a little bit about where you actually live, Mariska. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be a tricky one for me. Um, where I physically live at the moment is New Zealand Blenheim. So, yes, that is a weird pronunciation, I know. It is spelled Blenheim, so it is a Dutch type of name. But for some odd reason, yes, New Zealanders do have a tendency to not always speak the same English as everybody else, and decided that it is pronounced Blenheim. So that's where I live, um, and I... I will need some time to think about what to write, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the purpose of this. You know, for people who are joining us for the first time, our whole platform is about education, inspiration, and hope, and, of course, a little bit of entertainment. Tracy Cram Perkins, where in the world are you living? I live in this little idyllic town called Gig Harbor, Washington, and we have a so it's called the Puget Sound and then our harbor is right off of that and we have water activities we have boating obviously with water activities but we also have an active fishing fleet there's so many different things you can do you can hike you can dine there's a and ah 
There's also a um, signature whiskey brewing companies here and specialty beer brewing companies here. So we have a little bit of things to, to enjoy and dining is also part of it. Look at Tracy already Ooh. writing her article. She's full in on this, I can tell. Yes. <laughs> Tracy, well, when you said, oh, like, I thought we were going to pick a place and then just go for it. And I was like, if you say Timbuktu, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> and I, of course, am living in New Jersey on an island. And it would be pretty easy for me to write something. So first of all, would you accept the position? If it was a part-time thing, you could fit it in. Would you be willing to do that, Mariska? Yes, yes, um, because I will actually go out and experiment a little bit and, and find the things that tourists might enjoy, or even people that's local to the area. I might find a few hidden spaces that they haven't visited yet. So, yes, that's I would. Very, very true. We we get so much into a routine and there are things that we never even know about. And people come from other places. They're like, what do you mean? You haven't gone to the X, Y, Z. It's been here for a million years. You're like, no, I didn't know about it. Tracy, how about you? Would you take on the role if someone asked it, asked you and offered it to you? I think that would be fun. After hearing Mariska say that, it's like, I want to make treasure maps and have people find things. <gasps> oh, yes. Look at the creativity that's coming out of this already. I love it. <laughs> we every year we have a street scramble and the locals get a map with nothing on it and they have little circles and then clues that you have to find and you have to prove that you've been to that place i think we could expand that and then it could be to if if you enjoyed going out and drinking wines or art galleries or if you wanted to go now we also have a um okay we're in Italy, where they have the gondoliers, we have a gondolier that takes people out in the harbor and sings to them. And so there's this wonderful gondolier that goes through the harbor and you can rent him for an hour. And you can also have this romantic meal with a little uh, catered to you while you're out on the water. It's just incredible. So I think there'd be a lot of fun things we could do. The true writer is coming out in Tracy, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. All right, so Let's talk a little bit about what the weather is typically like. Do you have four seasons where you are? And if it's really hot, does it get super hot? Does it get super cold? Mariska, how about there in New Zealand? Well, at the moment, uh, you guys can't really see. I have long sleeves on. Uh, it is winter for us. So one of the things that I will definitely put into the guide is if you are from the northern hemisphere, um, that our seasons are the opposite. So Northern Hemisphere, if you guys have summer, we have winter. And if you guys have winter, we have summer. So do not expect Christmas and snow when you come to visit New Zealand, because <laughs> you will be very disappointed. It's warm when it is Christmas. Uh, other than that, weather-wise, generally the area where I am in is known as sunny Blenheim because it is one of the most sunny areas in New Zealand. So I will definitely put that in. Now I have a question. Is it Blingham like bling, like jewelry, bling, blingham? B L Blinheim. Blinheim. So mm-hmm. Okay, Linheim, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, I like it. So now we've just learned that if where you're living, you're going into summer, Mariska is in winter. How about Tracy, mm -hmm. where you are? Okay, well, it's definitely going to summer and we're a little warmer than normal because normally we have January and in June. It's not, it's more like winter. However, this year we've had just incredible sunlight. It's been very temperate. And it's only been in the low uh, 70s for those of you in the U.S. And that would be about 25 degrees for you in New Zealand. And so it was, it's been very, very wonderful. Uh, normally, we want people to come in the summertime because that's when they really see how spectacular it is. All the foliage is out. Uh, everyone's gardens are blooming. And, but in the wintertime, it's still, it's starkly beautiful. But it's also wet. So if you don't mind getting wet, there's a lot of things you can do. <laughs> True. 
Oh dear. Jacqueline just uh, kicked Am herself back? off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are kicking ah. me off at that. I was, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm here, I'm out here. Tracy, I want to tell you, I've been to Washington State, but it's been decades ago. We had a family member who was in the military, and so we went oh. to the, the Army base there, and it was raining the whole time. And I thought, no wonder there's a gondola. You need a boat. But you're presenting a whole different side, which I'm really appreciative of. So what I want you to think about as we talk about writing this article a little bit more is you're going to be weaving in <clears throat> excuse me, what it is that you do in your column so that you're not only providing information about the beautiful place where you live, but you're also encouraging people to contact you for work. See where I'm going with this? Woo. Okay. So we've talked about the weather. I'd like to hear you pick out, uh, Tracy's done this already, but I'll have you elaborate, pick out two or three things to do or places that you would put at the top of your list when you're writing this column. So I'm going to go over to Tracy because I know she's she's got this Mariska. I usually call you first, but I'm going to give you a little more time. Tracy, tell us about two or three places. Oh, gosh. So there's some fun things. We have a little area called uh, Bridgeview Park, and it has a view of the Puget Sound. When the tide's out, there's this lovely walking beach and you can see the narrows, the Tacoma Narrows with two bridges. Sometimes if you're there at the right time, you're going to see orcas or you might even see pods of porpoises swimming through the channel sometimes as during uh, pupping season. So there's a lot of things you can see. You can also fish there and you can launch your kayaks there. It's also part of a maritime campground where you can actually pitch a tent and camp overnight. We have an entire circuit that you can do around the South Puget Sound, and it's a really cool adventure if you're a water person. Now that's number one. Number two, I would also take you to downtown Gig Harbor. There's a wonderful walk that you can do all the way around the harbor. There's festivals, there's places to stop and eat, there's places you can actually sit up on top and, and watch the harbor and the boats going in and out. There's also places where they have live music. Sometimes they have the Harbor Wild Watch where they bring the actual sea life in where you can actually touch them. So there's very interesting things you can do down there. And then the next thing I would do is I would take you for a drive out to a little known store that's way out in in the back country and it just got a road four years ago. So to get to this, it's called the Chalet in the Woods. It is an incredible scan. And you would see things that you wouldn't see anywhere else in the US. It's incredible. I can't wait to go. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing because we're educating people, you're educating people on places that they may never have been and maybe had a different opinion of or thoughts about. So I'm thinking, wow, I can't wait to go there. Mariska, how about you? What are two or three places or things that you want to share in your column that people have to do or see? Oh, okay. So first off, we are in wine country. So hopefully you do have a taste at least for a little bit of wine. Yes, there's some beer breweries around here as well that you can try out. But mostly we have vineyards for miles, miles and miles and miles and miles, literally. So there is a lot of different wines that you can come and taste when you are in the area. Different vineyards that you can come and go to the cellars itself and get some wines from the people that actually make them. So that would be my very first thing that I would suggest to do in the area. And you will most probably get that on the top of the Google list as well. Then the next thing that people might not know about is we have a, a bit of a runner's event. So if you are into your exercise and you enjoy running, especially longer races, we have a vineyard running race. Um, it is happening in, I might have the date wrong, but it is the end of April, as far as I remember. So 
that would definitely also be something that I would suggest that you come and do. And then we also have a lot of different sounds. So no, not sounds as in music, sounds as in coves within the ocean. Uh, pieces around here where there is trails that you can walk or otherwise some water related activities such as fishing or going on boats within our area as well that is lovely to do any time of year and is there a season that i would suggest well you can literally drink wine any season so come whenever you feel like <laughs> Sounds fabulous. Tracy, what do you think about what Mariska shared? Oh my gosh. Okay. I totally want to do that. I'm not that athletic, but I would just do the one around the wine vineyards just to, to if I could walk it, I would do it. <laughs> That's just to look so much fun. And then go and have the wine afterwards because you earned it. <laughs> That's right. I like the way you're thinking. And Mariska, what did you think about what Tracy shared? <gasps> I so want to come and visit. It sounds like there's so many exciting things to be doing. <laughs> now, I'd love for you to each share, what time is it where you are right now? Tracy. It is 4.20 p.m. Okay, and I've got 7.20 p.m. Mariska, what time is it where you are? It is 11.20 a.m. on Tuesday. Fantastic. That's right. We're on Monday. You're on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. So now the second part of our show, this is where you're going to start to work in what it is that you do. So when someone comes to see you or see your, 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 um, your beautiful city state that they're going to call on you because you're going to help them with your area of expertise. So how would you work that in Tracy? I'm going to start with you because you've got your book out there with thousands and thousands of copies and you, your mind is going to be thinking about it. How can you weave in what it is that you do about your book and how you've been a four-time survivor of caregiving of people with dementia? That is a great question. And I actually have an entire chapter in my book on travel. I, I know you can find that hard to believe, but... There are so many things that if somebody is early in their dementia, that we could make a, a journey for them. There are so many things that they can do. There's places where they can go and do uh, tactile events. We even have duck bowling. And if you've never done duck bowling, it's kind of like a miniature bowling alley and you get to do, it's a nine pin bowl and you can get to knock down the ducks. It's really actually kind of fun. And, and it is also a dining center. So you don't have to go around too far. There's also a movie theater in town for a more, uh, if you want something more mainstream, but there's several different things that you can do with somebody that has dementia. And it, especially if they're early on and they can still participate, well, you can also plan to have downtime. So there's plenty of open spaces here with park benches and tables where you can sit down and rest and maybe have a picnic lunch and then sit down and have time to talk because we need downtime. And when you've got somebody with dementia and you take them out of their routine, it's really important to give them some rest because the more rested they are, the better behaved they'll be and the more fun everyone will have because then they're not going to fall apart in the late afternoon when you're trying to get back to something and you're stuck in a little bit of traffic. I love it, Tracy. I love how you weave that in. So you aren't specifically calling yourself out as an author. You are just weaving in if you have someone in your family who's going through this. This is a great place to come because of X, Y, and Z. Yes, yeah. definitely. definitely. I like that a lot. Mariska, what do you think about what she shared? I love that. I love the fact that there was practical tips in there. There was considerations for... When we have somebody with dementia, they might want to, especially in the early stages, look at these types of activities and also take into consideration that they need some downtime and they, we, we need some space within that as well. And there's some places where you could go and get that. So loving it. Brilliant. Brilliant. So Mariska, before I go to you, maybe what, what can be included in these columns is if you're a single here's some things that you could do. If you're a couple, if you're families, or if you're having um, somebody you love is going through this, we've got this, that, and the other for them. Yes. Yeah. 
Fantastic. All right, Mariska, as a transformation and leadership coach, as an author of children's books, what would you put in there? <laughs> Let's see. So um, I might suggest as a author and being a lover of reading of all sorts of materials that we also have a brand spanking new library and our library the new one is on the second floor of the new building and it's overlooking the river now if you are finished reading your favorite book whichever book that might be there's a small little cafe just below on the first floor so you can go down have a cup of coffee or whatever beverage it is that you enjoy and go for a lovely stroll next to the river of course what we have discovered within um, working with other human beings is that when we actually move it also helps our brain to come up with new ideas so if you were to have one of your business meetings in the area a stroll next to the river is always good to get the brain juices flowing again. Wow. I'm really impressed with the two of you today. That's excellent. I mean, I'm always impressed with you, but this is great. Tracy, what did you think of what Mariska shared? Well, I, I love what I heard, but part of my line went down. So I'm not sure if, if I heard everything, but the idea of the library and being able to sit and read a book and then go to the you know outside and stroll. And I know there was something in the middle there, but I didn't catch it because the the it, my line just went dead. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. So another thing that I want people to take away from this show, I do have a method to my madness, is that there's always something positive about each place. It's opening our eyes and seeing it from a different perspective. So now we're going to change things up just a little bit. Now, Tracy, you're writing the column about New Zealand. And Mariska, you're writing the column about Washington State. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to get your thoughts together. But the whole purpose is just to have fun, have fun with it and take it anywhere that you want to take it. And then I'll be excited to find out if the two of you end up working for a magazine, writing a column. So <laughs> who wants to take a stab at it first? Ooh, go all blacks. <laughs> <laughs> I love New Zealand, so I have no problem with this because right, uh, it is it is such an incredible place. The minute you get off the airplane and you step on the ground, you feel feel the power of that place just rising up through your body. It welcomes you. It is so ancient. It is so all encompassing, and then the, it's spread throughout all the people that you meet. You will not meet a terrible person there. Everybody is so welcoming. It is incredible. And one of the things that I've never been to, to Mariska's particular town. However, I can say that I have never seen anything not grow in New Zealand. <laughs> they have the most fertile soil I've ever seen. And I would love to have a sample of that and grow, grow my own grapes because by God, they would taste good. <laughs> Tracy, you're already hired, okay? <laughs> All right, Mariska, over to you. How would you, Ooh. what would you write about, you've never been to Washington, you've never been to the States, correct? I have never been to the States and I've never been to Washington. Um, so my perspective will most probably be research mostly and living vicariously through you guys. Um, so I will most probably have a suggestion list in my article around things to consider when traveling to a different country, such as the US. So having some insider knowledge is definitely a must because that will help you to get those more authentic experiences in any place that you are visiting especially if you go to the US. I can suggest that you speak to Dr. Jacqueline if you would like to um, go and see some specific areas, especially around California or uh, 
Dr. Jacqueline, where are you at the moment? I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey. There you go. <laughs> so in either of those, you can go and um, speak to Dr. Jacqueline, and I am sure she will suggest all her favorite places to hang out. So local knowledge, always a good thing to have when you are traveling. And in the case that you are unable to do that, I would suggest sometimes going into those areas with a anthropologist's ugh, my tongue um, view and going to discover what it is that people in those areas do and, and how it is that they live life. Another thing that I would also make sure that most people think about when they go and travel is our clothing are not created equal. Yes, and I say this with my tongue not necessarily in my cheek, because I spoke to one of my friends that live in Singapore the other day, and she was going to visit Australia. So one of the things that she was taking into consideration is to pack a whole bunch of long sleeve shirts because it was going into autumn in Australia, and Singapore typically is quite a hot country. Now, one thing to take note is the long sleeved shirts that you would get for sale in Singapore will most probably not do the trick when you go to Australia. It would be better to get a couple of shirts once you land. So if the climate that you are from is quite significantly different to the climate where you are traveling, uh, either a lot hotter or a lot colder than where you, you where you typically are, it would be wise to maybe get garments once you land. And that would be my sum total. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I love the creativity. It's fabulous. All right. Last part of the exercise, which I didn't, I just came up with this, by the way. So Tracy's main focus is on her book and her book sales. And Mariska, would you say your main focus is on your work as a certified coach? Mm -hmm. Okay. So given the little that you know about each other, except what you just found out today, how could you see or what could you see as a potential collaboration between the two of you? Do, 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 do. You know, I'm all about bringing people together, right? <laughs> yes. I, I honestly don't know what the kind of coaching that you do, Mariska. So without that knowledge, I I would be really shooting in the dark here. Mariska, do you want to fill her in? <laughs> well, Tracy, um, I, I typically focus on people moving from a specialization into leadership. And in saying that, I also do transformation coaching. So if it is a change in life or career circumstances, I coach in that space as well. So the way that I would see us collaborating would be you support people when they are taking care of somebody with dementia, right? So within that space, they need quite a bit of support in how to handle it and how to go about it. And as we all know, unfortunately, it also means that at some point that person will leave us to go to a different place and we will need to transition into a new role or a new environment for ourselves. And that might be when I come in. Look at this live on television. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, Mariska. Trace, what do you have to say to that? Um, I am halfway there, uh, only because the, I, I apologize, whatever's going on with our line today, I keep losing half of what you're saying. So what I got out of it, and then if you can fill in the blanks. So um, I heard the part about how you would support somebody that, you know, oh gosh, where should I even start here? Um, it sounded lovely though, what I did here about helping somebody when they were, you know, so talking about support somebody uh, through the, what I think you said was through the disease um, and helping that person that's caregiving. Is that correct? Is that? Mm -hmm. I, 
Okay. Yeah. I, I apologize. Cause it, 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 for some reason I don't have a lot of line today and I'm not sure why. Um, but I think that would be just fantastic. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how I would support you in this unless you actually had a family member that had dementia, because that's really where my expertise is, is making sure that you would have survival skills and not only survival skills, but a way to thrive while doing it. Um, because these things are not happening to you. They're happening for you. It sounds strange, but it is life altering when you're caring for somebody with dementia and you have to reframe and change your perspective or you're not going to survive it. And you have to give yourself permission to, to laugh and have experiences with joy. Because if you don't have joy in your life, you, you are just going to die before you're the person you're taking care of. Tracy, so I have an idea based on what I've seen, the work that you do and the people that you've had on your show here, Dementia Home Care, is Mariska is working with people to become leaders or in a leadership role. And in the work you're doing, a lot of times it involves looking at something from a different perspective. So if you think about the, the Lego lady, if yeah. you think just about Legos, if you think about teams, leaders of teams of people and people getting together, maybe for a team building activity using Legos or actually cutting through all of the ego and breaking it down it's because when someone's going through dementia, their mind's breaking down, right? And they're going back sort of to a childlike behavior. And I feel like there's a child in all of us that wants to come out. So there's a, a lot of pressure to be a leader. So if that leader can incorporate that childlike essence, then I feel like they're, they're even more desirable to work for or work alongside. Well, and the interesting thing about what the, Mariska, you were on this episode, but we had uh, the Loretta Vini come on and she's a Lego serious play instructor. And she is also an inspirational speaker. And she goes out and she talks to people and she has them create things that express joy or maybe what their favorite or, or what their ideal home would be if they were to build and design their own home. She also does it for team building with incorporations, which is what Dr. Jacqueline was just suggesting. And it is amazing because it breaks down the barriers and it gives you that childlike sense of joy. And there's no judgment because it's what you're feeling at the time. And it's your creativity. It's a great, great idea. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this is why I love what I do. <laughs> it's just so much fun to bring people together and to brainstorm. And I hope that you two will reach out and connect with one another and, and see where it goes. So we're actually at the end of our show. And I want to make sure that you get a chance to talk about your work and how people can reach you. And Tracy, we welcome you back again. Tracy, let's <laughs> start with you. Tell people about your show how they can find it. Are you open to people booking in as guests? Tell us what we need to know. Oh, absolutely. So it's the Dementia Home Care Show and it's on USA Global TV. It airs live on YouTube, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. I definitely welcome anyone who wants to share their dementia story or some problem that they solved helping other people get through dementia, I would love to talk to you. And you can sign up through our website, and that's USA Global TV, uh, book a show. So uh, look for that. And then you would look for the Dementia Home Care Show. And again, we're on the third Tuesday of the month. And Tracy, for people who want to purchase your book. So the book is available on Amazon. It's in wide release. You can get Amazon, your favorite local bookseller. If you're in the U.S., you can get it through Barnes & Noble. Um, so and also Target in the US. So any of those are available, but it's in wide release. So if you have a favorite local bookstore, please support your local bookstore. Can people get it in New Zealand? Absolutely. It's in worldwide release. There actually are copies floating around New Zealand and Australia, Germany, places in Africa, South America. So I've had people reaching out to me from all around the world. Um, it's been quite an experience and not what I was expecting. I even had somebody reach out to me from Finland because they were taking care of their mom. So, I mean, it's just, it's just a really fantastic uh, community worldwide. Tracy, what is your contact information, please? Okay. Uh, if you want to reach me, it's at the bottom of the screen. You can email me at Tracy at tracycramperkins.com. Um, 
I also do have a day job, but I will respond to you uh, as soon as I'm available to, to contact and we can uh, arrange to talk if that's something you want to do. Thanks, Tracy. And you know what else I just want to highlight and then we'll go to Mariska. It's an example of you've got a day job. You were taking care of family members. You thought, hey, let me put it in a yeah. book. And little <laughs> did you know that the book was going to be so popular that it's available all over the world. People are thanking you, reaching out to you. You have your own television show. You never know where things are going to go. Mm -hmm. So true. <laughs> it's so Sorry. true. <laughs> Mariska, in addition to doing this show weekly, you're also one of our expert presenters on Talking Heads. Tell us about that. Oh, yes. Um, so Talking Heads, and I always need to remember the whens and the wheres, seeing as I'm on a different day and time than the rest of the U.S. So Talking Heads is on a U.S. Thursday evening at, Dr. Jacqueline, is it 6 7? 6. Yeah, 6. Ah, 6 p. p. Eastern. There you go. A little bit earlier than this show is. Um, and quite a different day. So that's when you can catch me live on Talking Heads. And, of course, if there is any of the episodes that you have missed or want to re-watch or binge, binge, watch ugh, a whole bunch of them, you are more than welcome to do so as well and find them on USA Global TV and Radio, and we also have them on YouTube. So it's nice and easy to find them, and you can watch them as many times as you want. And other than that, also enjoy writing Lady Anna's adventures. So she is, yes, on the go she is traveling literally around the globe at the moment so you will find her in a city near you um, <laughs> well almost <laughs> and what else do i do dr jacqueline what, what else was the question you're coaching how can people hire you <laughs> Ah, yes, if you would like to get hold of me, you can do so via my email address, which is mariska at journey to the number two discover.com. Or alternatively, you can get hold of me via LinkedIn. I would love to hear from you. And if there is anything that I can assist you with, please do reach out. I love sharing resources and all the latest and greatest research that I have been indulging in. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mariska. And I just want to leave people with this information. We do now have a group of people who are working on our YouTube channel for search engine optimization, as well as our custom thumbnails, which is really exciting. And soon we will be at 100,000 views in 28 days. And very shortly, we'll be at 25,000 subscribers. And I'm planning on being at 100,000 by the end of the year. So this is where I put my time and effort when I'm not doing all the other things, all the hats I'm wearing, it's on the YouTube channel. So for anybody out there who's watching on Facebook and LinkedIn, we love them, but I'd love to have you move over to the YouTube channel because we get real time data from there. So thank you again. We will be back tomorrow with more of our shows. And if you'd like to join us, you know what to do. Go over to usaglobaltv.com, book your session. All right, that's all for now. Please go and buy Tracy's books. Please go and connect with her. Go over and connect with Mariska on LinkedIn. Hire her as a coach. You're in good hands with both of these beautiful women. All right, thanks again. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.